I've been feeling really nostalgic about the 3DS lately. I don't really know why that is. Maybe it's just because I am missing dedicated portable handhelds. Or maybe it's just because I recently did a video on my main channel about Japanese exclusive 3DS games. But I kind of wanted to go back, reminisce a little bit, and talk about some of the games I've acquired over the years. As well as, you know, the, the collector's editions I've gotten and the Japanese exclusives that I've gotten. And kind of just walk through everything and talk about some of the games. Uh, there's some games I haven't played. I, I've gotten a lot of games over the years. So I'm not going to have too much to say about those. But I want to go through uh, and, and just kind of kind of walk through my collection. Uh, without further ado, we should get started. There's a lot of games to go through. This is probably going to be a long video. So sit back, grab some popcorn, you know, do some studying, whatever you want to do. Doesn't, doesn't bother me. Do whatever you want to do. Have this in the background. But just going to go through and, uh, yeah, talk about my games, like I said. So starting off, this is Seventh Dragon 3, code VFO from Sega. It's an RPG series that um, I think this is the only one we got in the States. There was a DS version, and I don't know if the second game came out on the DS as well, or uh, if that was a 3DS game, but I know this is the only game we got in the series. So, I haven't played this one, but heard it's good. An Ace Combat Assault Horizon Legacy Plus. Uh, this is actually an enhanced version of a game that came out earlier called just Ace Combat Assault Horizon Legacy. Uh, this one added some amiibo support, as shown here. You could uh, scan some amiibo and get some different uh, different stylized Nintendo themed aircraft skins uh, yeah this one's a little bit harder to find than the the original version I guess they didn't make as many but it's a nice combat game it's fun it's air air, air combat I guess that's what you would say um, yeah fun game adventure time hey ice king why'd you steal our garbage I remember seeing this game and you know thinking of 2d graphics and 2d pixel art was really really nice especially for like a licensed game like this. And you know, the game was fine. It's it's nothing special, but it's a fun little 2D platformer and it has that adventure time charm. So, it's a it's a pretty good little little 2D platformer if you like those kinds of games. This is Andro Dunos 2, I guess. This is a little shoot 'em up and one of the final 3DS uh, physical 3DS games that have, that came out. This one's still sealed. I don't really know much about it. I guess it was it was a numbered release, 772 out of 6,000. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a little shoot 'em up. Haven't played it. It's still sealed. Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. This game I did not play a ton of. I love Animal Crossing, but the home designing part of it isn't exactly uh, what I go to those games for. So. While this game was cool and it did a lot of things right, I don't think it was the Animal Crossing game for me. It was interesting though because they used a lot of the amiibo cards and they had the amiibo scanner that you could use with the uh, regular 3DS systems that don't have NFC in them. Uh, so it was a it was a cool little game, but not not the Animal Crossing game for me. This, however, was the Animal Crossing game for me. I freaking love Animal Crossing: New Leaf. One of my favorite Animal Crossing games. So much to do. Love the mini games on the on the island that you can go to. Love that they expanded uh, the customization a little bit, so you can still you can customize the the world a bit, but it doesn't go as far as something like New Horizons, where you can custom where you can put like any piece of furniture you want out in the world. But I kind of like that it's a little more simplistic and just you know you can still be creative without giving you tools to do literally everything. So I kind of like that about this. New Horizon puts so many hours in this game. Love it to death. Here's the Atui collection from Limited Run. This is a collection of four downloadable games that uh, the the publisher or the company uh, Atui put out. I think back then they were known as Renegade Kid. Um, and they put out games like Mutant Muds, Bomb Chicken, or, or Bomb Monkey, sorry, Chicken Wiggle, and Zeo Drifter, so uh, some pretty a pr pretty good collection of games here. Uh, this one I just kind of got, got for collection purposes because I have all the games digitally, and they're pretty good. Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate, not much to say about this one. Heard decent things, but this one's still sealed. Brain Age Concentration Training. I feel like everybody forgets that this one exists. Obviously, Brain Age is synonymous with the original Nintendo DS. Uh, we got Brain Age 1 and 2 on that system, but 
Nobody remembers that this version of the game exists concentration training, and I think they tried to make it a little more difficult, hence the kind of like uh, devilishly tricky branding here they got on. Uh, it's a it's a fun game. I mean, if you like Brain Age, you're gonna like this game, and I, I enjoyed it for what it was. I like I like Brain Age a lot. Bravely Default. Now this is one of the best RPGs on the system, I believe. Uh, I played, and I, I'm saying that, and I haven't even beaten it. I played like 40 hours, and I got to a po point in the game, if you've played it, you probably know, I got to a point in the game where something happened, and I ended up falling off of it, but from what I did play, I just loved it. The combat system was fantastic, the graphics were amazing, story was cool. Very classic style RPG, but one that's fantastic, and I, I really want to go back, I, I, I want to go back and beat this, because I've actually seen... Uh, the final boss, and it does some really cool things. So, Bravely Default, very cool. Here we got Bravely Second End Layer. I have not played this one. I don't know if it's better or worse than the uh, first game. And it's so weird because this game is called Bravely Second, but we also have Bravely, Bravely Default 2 on the Switch. So, their naming schemes, not sure what they're doing there. Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate. This is an interesting one because it's actually uh, developed by Mercury Steam, who did the other Lords of Shadows games. But Mercury Steam, Steam uh, now more well known for making some of the Metroid games for Nintendo. And I gotta say, their Metroid games are easily the best games they've developed. This Castlevania game, while not bad, is not great either. It's a, uh, it's kind of bog standard. I, I wouldn't like highly recommend it compared to a lot of other Castlevania games. Uh, it's decent kind of fun to go back to, but it's it's nothing special. Here's Cave Story 3D. That's kind of like a lenticular cover that's hard to see on camera a bit, but uh, you can pop this out here. This is a 3D version of Cave Story, hence the title, and uh, it's 3D both stereoscopic 3D as well as the models and stuff were all updated to be 3D models rather than the 2D pixel art uh, from the original games, and obviously uh, you know, your your preference will vary. I prefer the 2D pixel art, but this game doesn't look bad either. It's a decent way to play Cave Story. I would say if you are a big fan of Cave Story, this is a cool way, a cool new way to play it, uh, and it's and it's still really fun. Great Metroidvania. All right, uh, Chibi Robo Ziplash. I honestly I can't say much about this game because I have not played it because I'm scared to play it. I I love Chibi Robo so much on the GameCube and I, you know I just I don't want to like hurt myself by playing this game. I know so many people don't like it, but I love Chibi Robo as a character. I I want to like play this game and I want to hope and pray that this is somehow better than people give it credit for but it's it's not the chibi robot i love either way because it's a platformer it's like a 2d platformer rather than the 3d kind of platforming adventure game that the original was so i know it's not going to hit the same but what a what a terrible way for chibi robot to go out i it, it just makes me sad man codename steam this game is actually really really good I don't think it's sold well because I remember seeing this at five belows for five dollars and like obviously that's not a good sign if you're a Nintendo game, a first party published title from intelligent systems of all teams. But this is such a great game like it's it's a tactical strategy game similar to Fire Emblem and uh, Advance Wars that intelligent systems makes but it's got a wacky story involving these like US presidents and you can even use amiibo the Fire Emblem ami amiibo to get like Krom and Ike in the game. Super, super weird, but really fun. And it's like, I don't know, I just wish Nintendo would allow their developers to make more original ideas like this. But obviously, if they don't sell, they don't have that, that you know, that drive to tell them to make these types of games. So, you know, I'd pick this up. It's super cheap still and, and check it out. Code of Princess. This is a spiritual successor to Guardian Heroes on the Sega Saturn, and this version has uh, looks like a CD and art book inside, and this is kind of something that Atlas did on the 3DS a lot. They would do these, like, first print runs that have a, an art book and a CD inside or something like that, which is really cool. And uh, I don't think this game is as good as Guardian Heroes. Uh, it's cool that they kind of tried to do something uh, that harkens back to that game, 
but it's just it's not the same but it's still a decent decent time so here's conception 2 it's called conception because you fuck uh it, it's it's called conception because you can create uh star children as uh, the box says here you, you can create the perfect child to add to your party um how you go about creating that child I'll let you guys find out by playing this game. Yeah, this is this is a weird RPG. I did play a decent amount of it, and it's kind of like Persona in that it has like some dungeon crawling elements, but it's definitely not as good as Persona games. Uh, that's for sure. Weird, weird little RPG series here. I haven't played the first one, but I saw this and picked it up, and you know it had this like big box with the CD, so caught my eye. Yeah, it's weird. Here's Dead or Alive Dimensions. I played this game to death. It was one of those games that came out during like the dry spell that the, that the 3DS had early on in its life, and it kind of came out at, at like at the perfect time because I'm not really a big fighting game fan, and I had never played Dead or Alive before until this game, and I became a Dead or Alive fan with this. It's it was so much fun. I played online. I thought the story mode was cool, and I know. I know Dead or Alive is known for its fan service, but the actual fighting mechanics are really fun and, and easy to get into as well. So this was a great fighting game and one of the best ones on the 3DS, I think. Detective Pikachu. Such a weird game. Pikachu talks in this and they released like a giant amiibo for it as well. Like this one I never beat because I, I got into it and then like, I don't know, something about the gameplay kind of turned me off. It was It's obviously geared more towards children. And it just, I don't know, it, it didn't grab me like a lot of Pokemon games usually do. And sadly, it's one of those late 3DS games that plays only in 2D. I, I, man, I hate that they did that for, for a while there at the tail end of the 3DS's life. But man, I, they said they were going to make a Detective Pikachu 2. Uh, maybe to go with the, the next movie that's coming out. But I don't know where that is. That, that, we haven't heard from that in a while. There's Dylan's Dead Heat Breakers for the 3DS, obviously. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I got this because it was a physical release that Europe got, and Japan also got a physical release, but this was a digital only title in North America. And I have not opened this or played it, but I have played the other Dylan games on the eShop, and they're cool. They're really cool. I don't like tower defense games, but the fact that you have like actual control over your character is kind of what helps alleviate some of the issues I have with tower defense. So it's a cool series. Epic Mickey Power of Illusion. I think this came out around the same time that Epic Mickey 2 came out. And this is like a way better game than Epic Mickey 2. Although it's not like a fantastic 2D platform or anything, but it tries to harken back to kind of those uh, Genesis Super Nintendo Mickey games that came out back in the day. And you know, that, that Kind of that's why they named it power of illusion because i think uh, some of those games had illusion in the title but it's not a fantastic game but it is much much better than epic mickey 2 so this was kind of the one you wanted to pick up if you were a mickey fan dr latrek and the forgotten knights this game is probably one of my most disappointing games on the 3ds i i'm a huge professor layton fan and you can probably tell based on the art here that it is definitely going for that Professor Layton style. And the the worst part about this game is that it has incredible production values. Like the visuals are amazing. The animated cutscenes are fantastic. The voice acting is great. And just the, you know, the story is cool. The story is worth, worth playing this game for. And the fact that the gameplay part of it sucks is just so, so disappointing. So it says there's like 250 brain-bending puzzles, but I promise you like half of those puzzles are exactly the same. They reuse puzzles so many times, and then there's these like stealth sections that you play that are so, so bad. Like they're, they're just not well made. I don't know, it, it's so disappointing, and I think they wanted to make a, this a series, because I, I feel like I remember this game ending on some sort of cliffhanger, I could be wrong on that, but I played through the whole thing, really, really tough getting through the gameplay of this game, but man, I, I just had to see it through, and it was so, so disappointing. Wish I could recommend this one, but I really can't. 
Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. I mean, Donkey Kong Country Returns is amazing. Just a fantastic game. And this version is good too. If you didn't like the motion controls on the Wii for, for rolling and stuff like that, then this is kind of the version you'd want to get. And I don't blame anybody for not liking the motion controls. I personally was fine with it. I got through the Wii version 100% with no problem. But I get, I get why people wouldn't like it. I think the only downside to this version is that it is 30 frames per second versus 60 FPS on the, on the Wii, but it's still a good version of the game. Is Dragon Ball Z Extreme Butoden or Butoden? I don't know. Uh, I don't know much about this game. I just know it's a fighting game, and I have not played it. So there's that. We got Dragon Quest Seven and Dragon Quest Eight. Uh, the remakes that they made for the 3DS. And it's weird. I think it's like Square Enix at, at one point was just like really hesitant to bring out any sort of Dragon Quest game onto Nintendo platforms or like it, just bring them out into the Western audience in general because Nintendo published these and Nintendo also published uh, Dragon Quest IX on the original DS. And I don't know if without Nintendo, they if Square would have brought these out. So glad these exist. I have not played them, but I've heard they're great remakes. So... Dream Trigger 3D is a game that I think a lot of critics kind of bashed because it was hard to get into and I don't really understand it. I actually had a lot of fun with this game. I kind of bought it on a whim because it was cheap and it still is really cheap. I think you can grab this for less than 10 bucks, but I, I really enjoyed what I played with this. It's like a kind of trippy little shooter type game. I don't know. It does have like a little bit of a difficulty curve, but once you start to understand what it's doing, like it's not that hard and it, it does some cool things. So I would, I would recommend picking this up if you like quirky, weird games. You got Etrian Mystery Dungeon. I don't have a lot to say about this because I haven't played it, but I love the cover and it has like a cool book and music CD inside like a lot of these Atlas games do. Etrian Odyssey 4, Legend of the, of the Titan. Uh, I mean, this the first three Etrian Odyssey games came out on the original DS and they continued that on the 3DS here. So we got Etrian Odyssey 4. And Etrian Odyssey 5. Uh, this one is still sealed. This is Beyond the Myth. Have not played it, obviously. Don't have much to say, but always really liked the Etrian Odyssey art. Really, really beautiful stuff. Here's Ever Oasis from Grezzo, the team behind the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time remake and Majora's Mask remake on the 3DS. And this game, I have a really funny story. This, this There was a Prime Day deal, Amazon Prime Day deal that was going on at the time. And I think they mispriced this along with like Hey Pikmin for $8. And these games weren't even out yet at the time. So they were like eight bucks for pre-orders and I, I ordered it and they honored it. So bought this game for eight bucks and I, man, it's such a little cool game. Like I, I remember playing the demo and it was, it was like really fun. And another one of these original titles that Nintendo kind of let the, their smaller teams work on and kind of like a passion project, really cool stuff. I would, I want more of this. I, I would love to see a Switch port of this as well, so. Here's Fantasy Life from Level 5. I know a ton of people love this game. Uh, I wish I played it more, though, because, uh, I don't know, I felt like I just had too many options. Like, there were so many jobs in this game, so many things you could do, and I got a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, I did not play it for too long, but I would love to go back and, and try it out. They are bringing out a new F Fantasy Life game on the Switch, though, so maybe I can try to get into that one. Final Fantasy Explorers. This one I also didn't really get too into. I know this is supposed to be kind of more like a Monster Hunter type Final Fantasy game, but I did not play this enough to really uh, get a good good idea what it's all about. I wish I did. I like Monster Hunter, so maybe I can go back at some point and try this, but yeah, it, it seemed cool. There's Fire Emblem Awakening. This was probably the first Fire Emblem game I ever played and I feel like that's the case with a lot of people. This is kind of the, the game that kept Fire Emblem alive, at least in the West. I know it's always been a big franchise in Japan, but this game sold super, super well for a Fire Emblem game in, in the West, in North America. And, you know, it was, it was great to see because it let a lot of people kind of get, get into the franchise, including myself. And I'm starting to get into it a lot more now 
uh, than I was even back then. I'm starting to play through some of the older games, and I never actually beat Awakening, but I have to go back and, and play this one, because what I did play was really fun. Uh, but yeah, really, really cool that this kind of uh, kept Fire Emblem going. I will say it kind of took Fire Emblem, it started taking Fire Emblem in a direction that I don't love as much as some of the older stuff that I've been playing, but still, really good. But the best Fire Emblem game on the 3DS, even though I haven't played them all, it's gotta be Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valencia. This is uh, such a good game. It's a remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden, which I think is the second game to ever come out. Uh, that was on the Famicom. And this remake is so, so good. The characters are amazing. They added these like little on foot dungeon segments where you can explore, which is really cool. Like a, that's the only time I think a Fire Emblem game has done that. So I just, you know, I, I love everything I played about this game. Uh, really, really fun stuff. The, the combat was great. Highly, highly recommend this. I hope Nintendo does more of these like Echo style Fire Emblem games and brings back some of the some of the games in the series that we never got out in the West. Here's Fire Emblem Warriors. I picked this up for like seven dollars. It's still sealed. I have not played it, but it is a new 3DS exclusive. It will only work on new 3DS systems. So that is that's kind of interesting. And I think yeah, they you, you can see on the spine there's also like a very specific new 3DS logo there. So that's kind of cool. Makes it unique. Fossil Fighters Frontier. Now this is the last game in the Fossil F Fossil Fighters franchise that we got. And it is, uh, it's kind of uh, like a Pokemon-esque game where you, I think you can like, yeah, tap out these little fossils and, and get your little dinosaur buddies. I haven't played much of the Fossil Fighters franchise to be honest, uh, but it always seemed cool. And I have the uh, first one on the DS. I don't have Champions though, the, the sequel. I really want to get that one. Uh, yeah, it's a, it looks like a cool series. I gotta get into it. Here's Freaky Forms Deluxe. I I hate that this little French thing is here. I know this is a Canadian copy of the game, and I didn't know that when I bought it. Nothing nothing against Canadians, obviously, but why well, you got to put put the little French logo there? I know you, the people in Quebec speak French, but why well, you got to ruin the box art like this? Don't do that. Ugh, it just bothers me. I don't know. I get it. Inclus inclusivity. Let everyone, uh, you know, be able to play the game. And But, I mean, you can see the, the French is on here. You don't need a little badge that says it, it, it's playable in French. I don't know. Anyway, Freaky Forms Deluxe. It's a cool game. Really wacky. I played the eShop version of this first when it came out. And I really enjoyed the, the quirkiness. It was so weird. And uh, you could create your own, like, little crazy creatures they got like a caterpillar here but people created some like really weird stuff in this game and i i had a lot of fun with it There's gabrielle's ghostly groove 3d don't know much about this one it's a i believe it's a rhythm game but i have not played much of it at all so i don't have much to say this go go coco polo anniversary collection from limited run this is a two-pack here of a couple games that were eShop exclusives at the time. And it's kind of cool because one of them, obviously both of them are now delisted because you can't buy anything on the eShop anymore. But one of them was actually delisted from the DSi shop. And I don't know, I don't remember if you could get it on the 3DS eShop. I don't think you could. So the fact that they kind of ported it and brought it to the 3DS physically is actually really cool. And this is one of the final, final physical 3DS games to be released. I believe Limited Run will have one more 3DS game that they're putting out. Uh, as of this recording, it has not been announced or shown off, so we'll see what that is. Harvest Moon 3D, A New Beginning. I don't know much about this game. I have actually never played any Harvest Moon game despite owning a bunch of them. Really need to, uh, really need to try out the series. I don't know if this is a good one or not. But this might be this might be after uh, after they kind of moved to Marvelous. The actual Harvest Moon team moved to Marvelous and created the Story of Seasons game. So maybe this one's not so great. Here's Hatsune Miku Project Mirai DX. Uh, this is a rhythm game, and I also have uh, it came in this big box that came with like a little lanyard, and I think the game itself comes with a bunch of AR cards as well. 
which is kind of cool because uh, Hatsune Miku is like a not an augmented reality type character, but it is a it's a it's kind of like digital like virtual character. So it's kind of cool. You could probably like use the 3DS and, and use the AR cards to kind of bring her to life, kind of like the, like she does on stage. But this is a cool little you know it's a, it's a fun little. Uh, rhythm game series and it, it works well on the 3ds as well it's it's got a very very cute art style and i enjoy it it's a fun little rhythm game brought this up earlier but this is hey pikmin uh this is uh this is such a weird weird release it's like a 2d side scrolling game uh in the pikmin series but i've heard it's actually really good and people didn't give it enough credit when it first came out. I know I didn't, because I didn't really play it. I really got to go back and play this Pikmin game. It looks super cute. And I really wish I, I got that Amiibo as well, because I, it, I didn't, and it is now a lot more expensive than when it first came out. So, yeah, I got to go back to this one. This is sadly also only plays in, in 2D, because it was one of those later releases, but I don't know. What are you going to do? Jake Hunter Detective Story, Ghost of the Dusk. I have not played this one, sadly, but I do enjoy me some visual novel-type novel games, and I have heard Jake Hunter is a fun little series here, so I gotta give this one a try. It looks kind of cool. There's James Noir's Hollywood Crimes. Don't know much about this. It's, a, it's another puzzle game. Ubisoft. Uh, could be cool. I've heard decent things about this one. Nothing great, but I do like puzzle games. All right, here we go. Kid Icarus Uprising. This is my favorite game on the 3DS. I think it's just incredible. Sakurai absolutely nailed it. It has all his like charm and like everything, everything you've come to love from Sakurai from Smash Brothers is in here, but he was just able to go absolutely nuts with this game. The characters, the story, the voice acting, it's all so incredibly good. The graphics are some of the best on the 3DS. The music, oh my god. The music is just out of this world. So many incredible tracks. And when you think the game is, is over, it's not. Like, there's so much to this. AR cards are in there. He added AR card support. I remember they were, they had, like, booster packs of AR cards. And, like, they actually, I don't know if they ever actually sold them in stores, but they gave them out at events like PAX and E3 and stuff like that. Uh, either way, I, the the thing that kept people from playing this was everybody said the controls were hard to get get past because it would make people cramp and all that. And I get it, I understood it, but they included the stand for a reason. I played the majority of this game with the stand, and it actually worked. I do have the big box here, and as you can see, it is it includes that 3D stand, and it, like I said, it works. Like it really helps make this a more comfortable game to play and i don't know it's just i wish i hope more people can give this a chance i hope they can somehow bring this out on other consoles but i will say i think the touchscreen controls cannot be topped like i think the the way that you kind of spin the globe to to move your your reticle and all that stuff like i don't know if you can replicate that super well with motion controls or like even analog controls so kid Icarus uprising just an incredible game if you have a 3DS, you have to own this game somehow. You just please, please, please play this game. Kirby Battle Royale. This is kind of like a Smash Brothers type Kirby game. Kind of weird that they brought this out physically, to be honest. I wouldn't have expected something like this to come out physically, but another very late 3DS release has that uh, only, only playable in 2D logo there at the bottom. As well as Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn. Another late release. This one is still sealed, and I don't really think I'm going to be opening this one either because it's just, it's one of those late releases I, I ended up getting because I knew they wouldn't print too many copies of. And I think the, the Wii version is, is plenty for me to play. Um, so I, I don't really plan on opening this one. And I'm not really a sealed collector, but sometimes with games like this, I will just keep it sealed. Here we got more Kirby. Kirby Planet Robobot, and I am ashamed to say I've never played this game. I know people say it's one of the best Kirby games ever made, and I just, you know, I never got around to it. I really need to. It looks incredible, and wow. 
Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have not played this game. I apologize to all my Kirby fans out there. Really, really need to get around to this one. I did play Kirby Triple Deluxe, though, and I like this. I didn't like it as much as some of the older Kirby games, like on the GBA and all that, but it's still a fun game. I uh, kind of miss the more detailed backgrounds that you got with the 2D Kirby games. But, like I said, still not bad. Still a fun Kirby game. And uh, 3DS with, for Kirby, like Kirby on the 3DS, very solid. Lots of good games. Here's Langrisser Reincarnation Tensai. I don't know. I haven't heard great things about this game, uh, but I just bought it when it was kind of cheap and I, it's still sealed. I have not played this one at all and it kind of goes for a little a little bit now. Like I think it's like a $100 game now, so I don't know. I don't know if I'm ever, ever going to get around to this one. Layton's Mystery Journey. Uh, Catriel and the Millionaire's Conspiracy. This is actually really disappointing in terms of a Layton game. The story just, it didn't feel like it was like interconnected and I, I didn't see like anywhere that it was going really that interested me and the puzzles just really, the puzzles weren't as good as like you'd expect from a Layton game. I think this came out after the original like Puzzle Master passed away. Uh, the Puzzle Master who, I, I forgot his name, but he did a, a lot of the puzzles for the Layton series, which is it's sad, but you could you could kind of tell that this game did not live up to that Professor Layton uh, puzzle, puzzle name, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I, there's also a Switch version of this, and I don't know, the every other Layton game is is better than this in my opinion, but it's still cool to have. Here's Legend of Legacy. This is kind of like a very classic style RPG. I really love the art style they got going on here. A lot of people said that it was kind of like a bland game though, but really, really like the art. Haven't played too much of it, but from what I did play, it was like a cool little game. The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. This is my favorite 2D Zelda game ever. Uh, it beats out A Link to the Past. I just adore this game. The pacing is so good. Everything just, it's snappy, you know? Like, you move at such a quick pace, and you just do whatever you want. Like, I feel like you can go in any direction you want and just have fun. Like, I love the, the mechanic where you can kind of turn into a painting and go on the wall. I love that it is kind of like a direct sequel to A Link to the Past, and it, it still has that dark world. I don't know, this this game is just fantastic. One of the best Zelda games ever, to be honest. I love it, and I think it's incredible. Another incredible Zelda game on the 3DS. This is the remake, Ocarina of Time 3D. As I mentioned before, developed by Grezzo. This is a fantastic remake of Ocarina of Time, and it's actually the first time I ever beat this game on my own. I always watched people play this game when I was younger on the N64, but I never had an N64 uh, early enough to actually buy this game and play it for myself, so I never beat it on the N64, but I finally did when this version came out. Still loved it. Still felt nostalgic because I had those memories of watching my friends play it, and it's just, it's a fantastic remake. Same goes for Majora's Mask here. I actually never got to experience this at all on the N64, so this was my first time playing Majora's Mask 3D, period. And I just had so much fun with this game. It is, it's a lot different than Ocarina of Time, so it's hard to really compare them. And like, it's hard for me to say which one I prefer. But this one is just as good and like, it's, it's going for something completely different, like I said. And I know some people had problems with the like, changes that they made in this game. But I obviously, like I said, never played the original on the N64, so I don't really have that perspective. And I don't, like, I, I don't have a... A negative feeling towards any of the changes they made because I, I don't really know like everything feels good in this version so I love this Majora's Mask 3D fantastic game. The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes I have not ever been able to play this one because I always wanted to play this with friends and I never found anyone to play it with me and I would love to go back to this because look at those little costumes you can use for Link oh my god I, it's just this is so cute, and it kind of harkens back to the uh, Four Swords Adventures games where you could kind of play together in, in, in a co-op with friends. 
Yeah, I, I love the idea of this game, and I know it didn't get, like, the best reviews, but I know it's probably a really fun time if you if you find a group of people to play it with. Here's Little Battler's Experience. This is, like, a mech game from level 5. Have not played it too much, but I think this is, like, kind of a bigger franchise in Japan. Uh, we This might be the only game in the series we got here. But I have not played this one. I know it's still super cheap, though, so maybe if you like mech games, you can check it out. Here's Lord of Magna, Made in Heaven. Uh, this one is sealed. I don't know much about it. It is obviously some sort of RPG, but I have not played this one, so I don't have much to say. Here's Luigi's Mansion. Man, okay, Luigi's Mansion is one of my favorite games on the GameCube. And this, I just don't understand. This came out so late in the 3DS's life when nobody really cared about the 3DS at that point. The Switch was already out, I believe, and people just weren't buying 3DS games anymore. So this kind of, it was kind of released to its own death because, like I said, nobody was buying 3DS games. And I, I, I hate that for Luigi's Mansion because it's such a good game. And I just thinking about what they could have done with upgraded graphics on the Switch, it, it pains me. I mean, like, I, I still love the way the GameCube version looks. I think it's a, an amazing looking game, but, oh man, I don't know. It, I think it's probably the better way to play this anyway. Like, I don't think the 3DS version I would recommend over the GameCube version. Uh, yeah, I, I really miss, like, the old ghosts from the original Luigi's Mansion, uh, but this is here if you want. If, you, if this is the only way you have to play Luigi's Mansion, I'd recommend it, but I'd still go back to the GameCube one. Here's Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Now this is called, I think, Luigi's Mansion 2 in the other regions. I don't like this Luigi's Mansion game as much as uh, the first one or the third one. I think it's kind of a, a weaker game. They, they went for more of a, like a handheld style game where everything was kind of separated into smaller missions and there were multiple mansions that you went to and I don't know, I, I didn't love the, the design change to these new ghosts. They kind of remind me of, I don't know, I don't know what why they're they're like less less likable to me for some reason. I yeah, they're they're not scary. I mean the the ghosts in Luigi's Mansion 1 were not really scary either, but something about them was more scary than than this game. I don't know. I I just didn't like it. Maybe I'm a hater. I don't know. I I just didn't like this game as much as the other Luigi's Mansion games. What I did like though was Mario Golf World Tour. This is Probably my favorite Mario Golf game of all time. This is so good. There are so many courses, especially if you have the DLC. I put so many hours into this game. Just a ton of fun characters. There's like a fun single player mode too, where you can kind of use your me and go around and upgrade him, grab new gear. Uh, just so much fun with this this Mario Golf game. And it, it really makes... It, it really puts like Super Rush into perspective, where that game has... A decent amount of content but it just doesn't compare to this one I don't think so yeah go back to world tour and, and play this one you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about it's so good Mario Kart 7 the one that introduced the the paraglider and the underwater segments in Mario Kart cool little additions to the Mario Kart series and this was a good game I, I really enjoyed it. I think this is the first game that also introduced tracks that were only like a single lap like they were, you didn't go around in, in, in circles on the on the same lap. Like like the Woohoo Island stage was like one continuous course, even though it was separated into laps. It it didn't have any repeating sections, which was really cool. I love maps like that, like uh, Mount Wario in Mario Kart 8. If you played that one, uh, yeah, fun fun Mario Kart game. Not my favorite Mario Kart game, but still a really good time. And yeah, I enjoyed it. Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey. The only thing I can think about this game is how Alpha Dream was given the short end of the stick here with these late, late 3DS releases. Like I said with Luigi's Mansion, this game was kind of put out to die. And Alpha Dream, I feel like these games not selling super well played into Alpha Dream kind of going defunct, which is such a shame because Alpha Dream was such a good team, such a good developer, and I hate that these games play a part into their death. Um, 
Like Bowser's isn't Bowser's Inside Story is a fantastic game, and more people should play it. Uh, I prefer like the original pixel art of the DS version and like the art of the GBA games as well over these kind of remakes that use the Dream Team art style. But it's still a great way to play the game, and Bowser's Bowser's Inside Story is is fantastic. So yeah, it sucks that this was put out to die. I haven't opened this this copy. I, I kept it sealed, but I had to buy it and support Alpha Dream. And speaking of Dream Team, this is Mario and Luigi Dream Team. I I didn't love this game. Uh, I thought it was way too tutorial heavy uh, at the beginning of the game. Like I think I remember like even eight to ten hours in, I was still getting tutorials or stuff like that. Maybe that's a little hyperbolic, but I, I don't know. I remember getting so many tutorials, and it just it didn't feel as as fun as some of the older Mario and Luigi games. So yeah, I mean it's it's kind of a shame. I feel like. These games did go a little bit downhill on the 3DS, but I don't know if that's because they were just pumping them out so fast or what. Uh, yeah. Here's Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. I thought the idea of this game was really cool. Bring the Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi worlds together. Uh, I don't know if it turned out very hot though, because I never, I didn't actually play this one. But from what I've heard, it's it's not super great. It, it doesn't take like the best parts of Paper Mario or the best parts of Mario and Luigi. And I also heard like the Paper Mario portions were kind of lacking. Like they weren't really a very big part of the game in general, even though it's it's supposed to kind of take advantage advantage of the two worlds. So it's kind of disappointing, but I, I might play it for myself and see. And here's the other remake, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. Another one I kept sealed, and another one I really, really, man, I, I don't, I don't really understand. I, I, am all for remakes, but bring them out at, at times when your system is not basically dead. Uh, good way to play Superstar Saga still. I prefer the GBA one, but uh, this is not a bad way to play this game. Mario Party, the top 100. Somebody thought. The only good part about Mario Party was the mini games, and I don't know who that person was because they did not know what they're talking about. Mario Party is so much about the board game and the shenanigans, the stupid things that happen during the board game part of the game that you know it's it feels so lacking when you just have mini games in here. I never opened this copy of my game. I just I had to, I had to pick it up when it was super cheap, but yeah, like I don't know. It, it's definitely not the Mario Party game I wanted. Speaking of disappointments, man, I've been on. I feel like I've been on a downer recently with the the games that have been shown up. But Mario Sports Superstars, another really really lackluster game, and I love love Mario Sports games, but every sport in this little compilation was just so lacking in depth and like things to do. And I mean, they included things like like tennis and golf. Those those were already on the system to begin with, with Mario Golf World Tour and Mario Tennis Open. So it's so weird to have stripped down versions of those games in this compilation. Like, I feel like they made this game just to kind of sell the amiibo card functionality and try to get some money out of that because the rest of the game is super, super lacking. Like there's horse racing. I don't know that. I don't get that addition. And the soccer is just a shell of what Mario Strikers is. Baseball might have been kind of the, the best game possibly in this whole compilation, which is crazy to say. But yeah, I, this is this is not a, a good Mario Sports compilation. We got one more Mario Sports game here, Mario Tennis Open. Not the best Mario Tennis game, but I did play this one a lot and I did enjoy it. I didn't love the whole like uh, they have these like circles on the court that randomly show up to give you like a more powerful shot or more spin. Didn't love that mechanic in the game, but it still had some cool stuff. Like they had this like. Mario mode where you could uh, kind of it was like a mini game where you played where there was like a scrolling version of the original Mario Brothers on NES and you kind of had to try to get coins in that and then they they had a lot of cool mini games and the single player mode was fun and it had a single player mode similar to Mario Golf where you upgraded your me got new equipment and stuff like that so there's definitely good aspects of this Mario Tennis game but it's not the best one. Metal Gear Solid 3D Snake Eater. This is kind of like a crazy one because I remember Nintendo, like I think during one of their E3s, showing off a bunch of different developers and games that were coming to the 3DS. And I think Kojima was one of the people 
uh, or Metal Gear they showed off was one of the games coming to the 3DS and everyone was like, whoa, a new Metal Gear game coming? And, and then this is this is the game we got. This is a port of Metal Gear Solid 3. And from what I've heard, it's actually a, a pretty good port of the game to, uh, other than some technical issues or some, I think the frame rate kind of dips a bit in this, in this version, but still a, a good version of the game. And I really need to get into Metal Gear at some point. I've heard it's really dumb. I love dumb games, stupid, stupid stories and stuff like that. Like it, it, it takes itself seriously, but I've heard there's a lot of dumb things in, in, in these games. So I got to get into Metal Gear at some point. And this is a, this is a cool copy of the game to have. I think it's cool to have like a handheld version of this. Here's Metroid Prime Federation Force. Man, I actually have two copies of this game because I thought I could find someone locally to play it with, and I was absolutely wrong. This one is still sealed. Nobody ever played this with me. Except online. I did actually play this online with some friends. I never beat it, but what I did play, I really enjoyed. I think Federation Force is actually a really, really fun co-op game. It just came out at the worst possible time. This came out at a time when Metroid had a huge huge drought in releases and this was the game they announced and it had the metroid prime name in it as well so obviously this didn't go over well when they announced it but if you if you go back and actually play it it's really really fun and it feels like a metroid prime game too uh like the controls really really feel like they they pulled it straight from those games a uh, blast ball is also kind of how they announced it and showed it off at first i think i remember and Blast Ball is not, not a cool game. Like, I, I don't like Blast Ball. I think it was trying to take advantage of the popularity of Rocket League at the time. And yeah, I think Blast Ball is pretty much trash. Federation Force itself, though, fun, fun game. I think if you have friends to play it with, give it a shot. It's not bad at all. Now, the other Metroid game we got, Metroid Samus Returns. I got the special edition like box here that comes with the CD. I think Europe got a way better collector's edition for this game, which I'm really jealous about. I wish I had that, but this is an incredible remake of Metroid 2 from the Game Boy. Uh, we obviously had AM2R, the fan-made remake, but I think they both have their pros and cons, this version and AM2R, so I really enjoy what Mercury Steam was able to do here with the melee counter and the free aim, and it kind of made its way over to Dread as well. Really fantastic version of Metroid 2 and a, a, just a great remake. It was so weird how they announced this game though because I remember it was, I think it was 2017, could have been 2016 when Nintendo had their E3 Direct and this was not shown in the actual Direct. The way they announced this was on their post show during their Nintendo Treehouse Live segment. I don't know why they would do that for a franchise as big as Metroid. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. I feel like a lot of people missed out on the announcement because of that. Uh, but either way, this was really cool to get. It turned out fantastic. So glad we got it. Great game. There's Miitopia, a little fun, quirky RPG starring me characters. Uh, there's a remake, of, or not a remake, kind of like an HD port of this out on the Switch as well, which is where I kind of played it a bit more. This is a fun little game. Fun little RPG. And here's Moco Moco Friends. I actually don't know that much about this. It kind of looks like Pokemon, uh, but I bought this kind of when the 3DS eShop was announced to be closing uh, out of, uh, you know, when they kind of had a little bit of FOMO. Uh, and I bought it for really cheap, and I'm kind of glad I did because this kind of got pricey. Here's Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. This is the Monster Hunter game that got me into Monster Hunter. I kept trying to get into the series with uh, Monster Hunter Try on the Wii, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on the Wii U, but I couldn't get into those. And then finally, this is the one that really, really got me hooked because I think a, a bunch of my friends started playing it. I, I got in with them. They showed me the ropes. They showed me everything there was to kind of know about Monster Hunter. And that's kind of how I really got started. I'm really glad I did it because... I love the Monster Hunter series so much. It's so fun. Put so many hours in that game. Not as many hours into Monster Hunter Generations, though. Uh, I think I may have been a little burnt out on Monster Hunter when this game came out. I put so much time into 4 Ultimate that I did not play this one as much, but I still put maybe like 
80 hours into this one, which is which is crazy. So I know people put ridiculous amounts of time into Monster Hunter, but yeah, 80 for me is still a lot for a game like this. And then we got Monster Hunter Stories, an RPG. I thought this was super cool. Um, I think it uses like a more cel shaded art style, which is really nice. Uh, I don't have a ton to say about it because I didn't play it a lot, but I know there's a sequel on the Switch as well with Monster Hunter Stories 2. And uh, it, it just looks like a super, super cute RPG with Monster Hunter characters and monsters and things like that. So it's kind of cool. Nano Assault. This is a game developed by Shinin, which is the developer. They're the de developers behind things like Fast RMX, Fast Racing on the Wii, Jet Rocket. They get everything out of this every system that they that they develop for and this game's no different it looks amazing it's kind of like a twin stick shooter and the the stuff that they do like the the normal mapping and sort of the shaders that they use in this game is really impressive for the 3ds and it's just a really fun time i think there was an expanded version of this that was released exclusively on the eShop, but this version is still really good new super mario brothers 2 this game kind of came out at a time when New Super Mario Brothers was really, like, I, I feel like there was a lot of New Super Mario Brothers fatigue because I think this came out right after New Super Mario Brothers U or around the exact same time, and it's it's a good game, but the problem is like people were so tired of these games, they they, they were so formulaic and they tried to do something new with the like coin collection gimmick, and that was fun, but it it just didn't feel like it was a wholly new game. Uh, they did have a lot of like weird DLC stuff I remember for this. Uh, it might have been like on the cartridge, but you had to buy it uh, with the coin rush mode. Uh, it's a good game, but I feel like there's sort of a negative uh, negative connotation around New Super Mario Bros. 2 just because of the, the time when it came out. There's Nintendogs plus Cats Toy Poodle Edition. Love me some Nintendogs, loved it on the DS, and this is kind of more of the same. They didn't do too much new, but they really, like, obviously up the graphics. It, it, the fur shaders and stuff like that are so good in this game. And it's still Nintendog, so it's still fun. Really enjoyed it. If you like the original on the DS, you'll, you'll like these. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Here's Persona Q, Shadow of, the, Shadow of the Labyrinth. I think this is more like an Etrian Odyssey style Persona game. I have not really played much of it because I, was, I wasn't really into those types of games back then. I may be more willing to give it a chance nowadays, but uh, back then I really wasn't into this style of game. Uh, it did get some good reviews and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's a cool Persona game from what I've heard, but yeah, I'll have to give it a shot at some point. Pilot Wings Resort. This is my favorite launch game, I think, on the 3DS. It's it was so much fun, man. I I love Woohoo Island as a setting. I wish Nintendo would bring back Woohoo Island, and that was like one of the main reasons why I enjoyed this so much. You could explore around Woohoo Island and check out all the different locales and things like that. Like it was just so cool to be able to play a, a Pilot Wing game again uh, after so many years, and you know it's. I, I can't recommend it enough if you enjoy Pilot Wings or if you, you, know, you, you just want a relaxing game on the, on the 3DS, this is it. Here's Pokemon Alpha Sci Sapphire and Omega Ruby. This is the, the UAE variant of Omega Ruby. Not much to say about these games. They're, you know, they're remakes of Ruby and Sapphire and they did a pretty good job with the remakes here. Uh, but I know, I know IGN wouldn't like these games. Uh, too much water, right? So... Uh, yeah, they're, they're remakes. They're good little remakes of Ruby and Sapphire. We're in our little Pokemon hour here because this is a uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon. I got this little like steelbook bundle. Yeah, uh, I am not the biggest fan of Sun and Moon. I think these games really, really were too text heavy, too much talking. Uh, they were fun still. Like, I mean, it's, it's still Pokemon. I still enjoy Pokemon games, but just, just there was way too much talking. I can't. I can't express that enough. Pokemon Rumble Blast. Uh, this is not the game for me. This is very, very like a, a dumbed down game. You press basically one button to attack. 
I was never a huge fan of these Pokemon Rumble games. Uh, just, yeah, it's it's kind of like mindless fun. I I would kind of compare it to maybe like a, a Warrior style game in terms of just, you know, you're just mashing buttons. But Warriors games have more depth than this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. These are my, my type of games. Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. I actually haven't played this one. Uh, I have not played a Mystery Dungeon Pokemon game at all, but uh, it might be something I'd be more into now as well, like I said, uh, with the Persona Q. Uh, I, might, I might be more willing to give it a chance these days. It's Pokemon Ultra Sun, or Ultra Moon and Ultra Sun. Haven't played these copies. Uh, wasn't a big fan of Sun and Moon, so I never actually got around to playing these, these games either. Uh, they're still sealed, so. We have Pokemon Y. I actually enjoyed Pokemon Y a, a good bit. This was the first Pokemon game on the 3DS, and, you know, I think the novelty of having new, like, 3D rendered Pokemon was really cool. Uh, it, it wasn't, like, the best game in the world, but I, I still enjoyed it a decent amount, and got got some time out of it. I don't know if I did end game or post game stuff, uh, but I definitely got through the whole game and had fun. Here's Yoshi uh, Pucci actually, and Yoshi's Woolly World. I am so upset I never got the bundle with the Pucci amiibo. Love the yarn amiibo, and I never, never picked up the Pucci yarn amiibo. It's so sad. But Woolly World is an amazing game, fantastic Yoshi title. And, you know, this one is just, they, they brought it out on the 3DS. Not the best way to play. I know there's some extra stuff in this version, but the, the Wii U version is still the way to go in my opinion, but it's cool to have this. Here is Professor Layton and the Miracle Mask. The uh, first Professor Layton game on the new hardware on the 3DS, and it was a good game. I, I really enjoyed this one. I do remember initially thinking the new 3D model characters looked really weird. Uh, they they weren't as uh, they weren't as well detailed as like a lot of the 2D art that was in in the DS games, but it kind of grew on me over time, and, and it kind of came to enjoy it more. Puzzles were still really good. The story was great as always with Professor Layton, and just a just a really good game. And then we've got Professor Layton and the Azran Legacy. This one has actually gotten kind of expensive, which I would never expect for a Professor Layton game, but. It's getting up there in price, and it's a it's a good game. I do think this one kind of had like a weird like the story went almost too far with the craziness towards the end. Like I I feel like Professor Layton a lot of the times they try to stay grounded in reality a little bit. Like what they their reveals are sometimes crazy, obviously, but you could still believe that it's possible. And I don't know if that was the case with Azran Legacy. Still though, great Professor Layton game, lots of fun puzzles, good story. Again, had fun with this one, would recommend. Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. This was like a dream game for me. Two of my favorite franchises finally getting a crossover that everyone was kind of talking about back then. If you were a Professor Layton fan, if you were a Phoenix Wright fan, you were talking about how these these two series kind of felt similar. Like, they, they felt like they were tailor-made for each other, and everyone was kind of being like, man, they should make a crossover, and they finally did. And this is what we got, Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. It's a good game. It's definitely fun. It may not be the pinnacle of either the Professor Layton series or the Phoenix Wright series, but it's still a good time. And it, it includes a lot of what you love about each of these franchises. So I would still highly recommend this game. I think it's fantastic. Uh, and it was just so cool to get a crossover like this with two companies like Level 5 and Capcom working together. Love it. Speaking of crossovers, Project Cross Zone here is a huge kind of crossover game with uh, Namco, Sega, Capcom... Uh, this is like a strategy RPG. I think it's by actually Monolith Soft, if I'm not mistaken. Like a Monolith Soft developed a lot of these kinds of games. I don't know if it says it on the back here. But uh, yeah, this is like a strategy RPG, grid-based. You can do some crazy combos using a bunch of different characters from a ton of franchises. Like obviously you got Street Fighter, Resident Evil, 
Mega Man, uh, the Tail series I think was was represented. You got Space Channel Five with Ulala out there. Just so many different franchises. What what a crazy game this is. And I got the limited edition here that I think it comes with an art book and stuff like that. So really cool. It was so good they did it again with Project Cross Zone Two. This time they added even more characters and it became even crazier. And then Nintendo got in on the fun a little bit with some Fire Emblem characters. Uh, you see Krom there, Lucina. It's it's just just crazy. Phoenix, right? These crossovers are wild. I don't think the gameplay is super deep and it's not like anything magical, but it's just so cool to see a game like this where so many characters from so many different franchises come together into one. I, I think it's awesome. Puzzle & Dragon Z plus Puzzle & Dragon Super Mario Bros. Edition. This is a cool little puzzle game. Uh, they definitely added uh, the Mario Bros. Edition to kind of get more sales because I know not many people would, would pick up a puzzle game called Puzzle & Dragon Z. But this is a fun little like match 3, match 4 puzzle game. Uh, and and the, the Puzzle & Dragon Z apparently has like actually a, a pretty serious story going on with it. I didn't actually play that version much. I, I was the Mario guy, so I... I played the Mario edition a lot more, but this is a fun puzzle game. Here's regular show, Mordecai and Rigby in 8-Bit Land. I know I, I kind of got this one similar to the Adventure Time game uh, because it was it looked like a cool little 2D platformer with, with fun pixel art. This game is definitely not as good as that Adventure Time game. I think it's more like mid-tier, uh, maybe, maybe a little below average even for a, a 2D platformer, but it's not terrible and, and I'm glad I still have it. Resident Evil Revelations. Yeah, this is the this is the copy of the game that had the misprint on the the spine here. But but yeah, this game is just an incredible feat on the 3DS. It looks amazing graphically. Capcom were absolute wizards on the 3DS. I don't know what they did, what they had to do to get all this out of the 3DS, but it just it looks so good. And this was a great game. I really enjoyed it for a Resident Evil title. Uh, some of the portions weren't as good as others. Like the stuff on the ship was way better than the stuff outside of it. Um, but either way, I still think this is a great Resident Evil game and definitely worth owning, especially on the handheld. I know they released this on like every other platform known to man after it came out, but I think it's still fun on the 3DS. And here's Resident Evil Mercenaries 3D. They actually uh, released this way before Revelations came out, kind of to whet your appetite a little bit for Resident Evil. And this was just Resident Evil Mercenaries, uh, the, the Mercenaries mode on the 3DS. I remember there was like weird things going on in this one where characters from super far away ran at like two frames per second. And it's actually a, a thing you see like Nintendo doing a lot now with some of their games where things in the distance are, are rendered at a much lower frame rate. But I mean, it, it was still fun. If you like Mercenaries, this was a fun way to play. And I actually played a lot of this game, so. Is Return to Popolokroi, a story of season's fairy tale. Uh, Popolokroi is actually a pretty long running franchise at least over in Japan. Uh, I don't have much to say about this, but it looks like a little like farming adventure game with like more RPG elements than a Harvest Moon. So could be up my alley. Here's Rhythm Thief and the Emperor's Treasure. I bought this basically when it came out. Had no idea how expensive it would get. This is one of the most expensive games on the 3DS now. Goes for upwards of $250, $300. And it's another one of those games that kind of tries to take that Professor Layton formula, but instead of puzzles, you got rhythm games in this. And again, I, I love rhythm games, so this this absolutely appealed to me at the time, and I, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a really fun game. Not the greatest rhythm games in there, but still fun. Still a good time. Good story as well. I would find a way to play this. Maybe don't go out on eBay and buy it for $250, but if you can find a way to play it, I would recommend it. Ridge Racer 3D, uh, I don't remember if this was a launch title or not, but uh, it's a it's a fun little racing game. Again, Ridge Racer on Nintendo platforms is always a little weird because I don't think it happens very often, so it's kind of cool to see it when it does. I The one thing I remember about this is that the, the 3D mode, the stereoscopic 3D mode wasn't very good. I don't think they like 
handled it or like developed it very well. Uh, but other than that, the the game itself is fun. It plays like Ridge Racer. It's a good racing game. Is River City Tokyo Rumble? This is a uh, part of the River City franchise, obviously, like River City Ransom on the NES, and it is. Very much that style of game, uh, 2D, side-scrolling, beat-em-up, brawler, whatever you want to call it. Uh, not too much to say about this one, because I haven't played much of it, but it's cool to have. Here we got Sega 3D Classics Collection. This is an awesome compilation of games from Sega. Uh, similar to how Nintendo did their own line of 3D Classics games with Kirby, uh, Xevious, they had Urban Champion of all games. Uh, Sega did their own little lineup of games here and I think there was even more than what they got here but in this compilation they got Altered Beast, Sonic the Hedgehog, Puyo Puyo, Power Drift, uh, Thunderblade, Galaxy Force 2, just a great little compilation of games here and they look amazing in 3D. I love how 2D games like this look with a little bit of depth added and, and layers. I think the 3D classics line of games both from Sega and Nintendo are really cool and this is an awesome collection. Uh, here's uh, Senran Kagura Deep Crimson, Senran Kagura 2. This is the Double D edition because... Uh, and, then, and then we got uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4. Uh, this was kind of a big deal for the 3DS. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei, the, the mainline series, they, they hadn't had a game, I think, since the PS2. And uh, seeing this come out on a handheld on the 3ds was a, a big a big big deal like i said and this is a fantastic little rpg really dark these uh, the the mainline shin megami tensei series is known for being a lot more dark than games like persona and, and even persona while it is a little more quirky it does have some dark moments but yeah th this is a really cool rpg highly recommended on the 3ds Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner Soul Hackers. The cool thing about this game is that this is the first time we got this in the States. This was actually a Saturn release, uh, only in Japan, and they finally re-released it here in the States as Soul Hackers on the 3DS, and it, you know, really cool. This is kind of more of a, I think it's, it's more of a game like Strange Journey, if you played that on the DS. Uh, not, not as much like dungeon crawling like Persona, but more more kind of like Etrian Odyssey where you kind of move uh, move in a, like a little grid. So, yeah. Cool cool that they brought this out. Keeping up with Shin Megami Tensei, this is Devil Survivor 2 Record Breaker. This is a uh, re-release of Devil Survivor 2. Uh, this was re originally released on the DS. And this is a grid-based grid -based tactics RPG. I think what they added in here was like voice acting and stuff like that. If you've played the DS version, I don't know if you really need to play this one, but the Devil Survivor games were pretty fun, and, and I got this second one. Don't have the first, the remake of the first Devil Survivor, which was called Overclocked, but I do have this. Your Shinobi, a little callback from Sega, Shinobi game on the on the 3DS, so they really like went all out with this. Got a holographic cover and everything, which is really cool. A uh, really, really fun little 2D platformer. I don't think a lot of people played this one. Developed by Grip the Night Games. Uh, it's kind of a, kind of a no-name developer, uh, but it was it was well done, and I think it lives up to the Shinobi name. Would recommend this one if you're a fan of uh, of Shinobi or 2D platformers, 2D side-scrolling action games. Your Shovel Knight. You gotta have Shovel Knight. This is just the base game, on a handheld. That's that's actually the first place I actually bought Shovel Knight which is weird to say, but I, I really wanted to get that 3D effect because like I said, I love 2D games like this in 3D. Something about the layering that they do, it just, it looks fantastic. I, I really enjoy it. And this is Shovel Knight. What can you say about it? Spirit Camera, The Cursed Memoir. This was kind of a crazy game because it was basically entirely AR based, augmented reality. It came with like a little booklet uh, and it kind of defeats the purpose, though, of a horror game like this because you have to basically play this game with bright lights on because the 3DS camera is so bad. It just doesn't have a great camera and, and it, it won't really work unless you have bright lights. So it kind of kills the purpose of the game, but it's a cool experiment, I guess. I don't, I don't know. It's, 
uh, it's a first party published Nintendo game though, so I had to pick it up and yeah. Star Fox 64 3D, another one of these like N64 games they brought out, uh, remade on the 3DS and it's a fantastic version of Star Fox 64. Again, like Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, this was the first way I played Star Fox 64 and I absolutely loved it. Graphics have gotten a great little overhaul. Could use gyro controls as well. Just a great remake here all around. Star Fox 64 3D, very fun. Steel Diver. It's a game I think gets not enough love, to be honest. Like, it's, it was a launch game. It's, it's super, like, niche, I feel like. Slow-paced submarine game. Like, who's going to play that? But it's actually really fun. And it shows off the 3D effect really well. Uh, gives it kind of like an aquarium look. You're looking inside of like a little aquarium. Uh, and, you know, I really enjoyed the nuance of controlling these submarines. It was it was really fun. And I get why people kind of make fun of this game. It was really short. Not, not a ton of content in here. But for what it was, I enjoyed it. it, it it's got a cool history because it started out on the original DS. And uh, they brought it back for the 3DS. So... Yeah, I, I just, I have a soft spot for Steel Diver. Uh, I, I, I've i talked about it in, in videos on my main channel, but yeah, Steel Diver. Here's Stella Glow. This is like a, another strategy RPG. I played it a little bit and it seemed, seemed really good from what I played, but I, uh, oh, I don't remember seeing that. Uh, it was a little, a little uh, racy there, a little fan service, but you know, You'll, you'll find that in anime games like this. Uh, yeah, from what I played, it was cool. And I, I know a lot of people that have played through it have said it's actually a really, really good game. So, got to get back to this one. Your Story of Seasons. I mentioned this one earlier. This is These games are by the creators of the Harvest Moon series. And they kind of uh, lost the rights to Harvest Moon. So, they went out and made a new series called Story of Seasons. And this is uh, this is the first one in that Story of season series. So, yeah. If you like Harvest Moon, you'll like that game. And here is uh, the sequel on the 3DS, Story of Seasons Trio of Towns. This one is still sealed. I have not played it, but I am happy to have it. This is a cool, cool game. Super Mario 3D Land. This was uh, definitely one of the games that brought the 3DS back from the dead. Uh, we all know the story. The 3DS did not sell well to start. Nintendo slashed the prices. And this game, along with Mario Kart 7, kind of really helped bring it back to life, along with the price drop, obviously. But this is a really, really fun Mario, like, handheld game. I, For the longest time, I always said I preferred this game over Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U. But I think that was kind of rose-tinted glasses. I think that was just because I felt like this style of Mario game worked better on a handheld versus on a console. But either way, it's still really good. Uh, I think it, it feels a lot more simplistic than 3D World now Now that if you go back to it now. But like I said, it still works great for a handheld title. And they actually used the 3D effect very well. They had some vertical stages that honestly, it was harder to play without the 3D on. So they, they really took advantage of that. It's a, it's a fantastic Mario game. Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo 3DS. Sometimes I forget that this version of the game exists because it actually came out before the Wii U version. And after the Wii U version came out, people basically stopped playing this one. And it's still really, really cool that we got a dedicated handheld version of Super Smash Brothers after so long uh, of it being like a basically a console only franchise. So I think it's awesome that this exists. Just, uh, just kind of got forgotten though over time because everybody moved on to the Wii U version. Street Fighter 4 3D ed edition. This is another one of those games that has like a cool 3D lenticular cover. Uh, but yeah, this was a launch title as well. Another 3DS fighting game that was really, really well done. This was a fully featured Street Fighter game on a handheld, which was awesome to see. And it was another one of those games that they kind of they kind of developed to be more uh, a noob friendly, I would say, because I I am terrible at fighting games. And it was cool that they had touchscreen elements where you could press press a button and it would do like a combo for you that would normally take like a little button input. But 
like a like a more complicated button input. So this is an awesome game to have early on in the 3DS's life. Definitely one that I played a bunch, and you know, Hakan was my main. I love I love Oil Man. Sushi Striker, the way of the sushi do. Yeah, this was originally shown off for the 3DS, and then they brought it out on the Switch as well. Uh, because this is one of those games that uh, definitely came out late in the life of the 3DS, and nobody would have bought this game uh, for the 3DS when it came out if it was exclusive. This is this is such a weird late game, but it's another one of those original titles that I really love to see. Uh, I bought the 3DS one just to have it, and I also have the Switch version. This one is actually still sealed, but it's a fun little puzzle game. Here's Tales of the Abyss, a remake of a PS2 Tales game. Uh, from what I've heard, this is a pretty decent remake of Tales of the Abyss. Maybe not the best way to play the game, but still a, a decent RPG and uh, one that I haven't actually played myself. Here's Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy. Man, I am a huge fan of these Theater Rhythm games. Just such a great love letter to the Final Fantasy franchise and Final Fantasy music in general. Really enjoy the chibi art style as well. I know some people don't like it, but I really like it. And this is just a fun, fun rhythm game that goes through music from so many different games in the series. Uh, if you like Final Fantasy, and I, I just think if you enjoy video game music in general, you have to do yourself a favor and grab this game. As well as the sequel in Final Fantasy, uh, Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy Curtain Call. This is just basically an expanded version of the original Theater Rhythm with more songs, more music. Uh, songs and music are the same thing, but you know, you get what I'm saying here. There's just there's just more stuff to do and, and just a fantastic game. Another launch title here, we got Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Shadow Wars. This is kind of a sleeper hit of the launch of the 3DS. Like nobody expected a Tom Clancy game like this to be any good, but uh, it was like a actually a decent tactics RPG on the on the 3DS for launch. Like you don't have Advance Wars, you don't have Fire Emblem at launch, but this is actually a nice little substitute. I don't love the the style of it, like the the gritty Ghost Recon style, but gameplay wise, it was it was pretty fun and you know a surprise for the 3DS launch, like I said. Here's Tomodachi Life. Man, what a freaking game. This this game kind of like just took Twitter and, and social media by storm, and for good reason. It is such a quirky, fun, wild, weird game. So, so cool. This is this just feels like Nintendo from back in the day. It, it feels like something that would actually come out during the Wii and DS era, and actually, it did. The original Tomodachi uh, Connection, is what it was called in Japan, came out on the original DS, and it was very similar to this. Uh, just so many weird things you could do in here. Uh, bring your friends over, just visit. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain what you do in this game. It's just a bunch of weird things that you do with Miis. You can have a baby. As you can see, like, up here, you can freaking have a baby somehow. I want more Tomodachi life in my life. Bring, bring back Tomodachi life, please, Nintendo. I, I'm begging you. Here's Virtue's Last Reward, part of the, the Zero Escape series that started with Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors on the DS. I love uh, 999, but I never played enough of these, like, these sequels to really uh, have a great opinion about them. Like, I, they, they intrigue me, but something about having so many different storylines and, and so many different paths, that was just a little overwhelming for me, and I never was able to actually play through all of this game. I played a lot of it, but I didn't play through everything, and it's still good, it still has that Zero Escape uh, kind of that vibe and that, that intrigue behind it, but I just, I, I never beat this one. I, I really want to go back to this. WarioWare Gold, love me some WarioWare, and this is a fantastic, fantastic game. Another one that came out very late in the 3DS's life, but this is one you, you guys have to pick up. If, especially if you like weird weird games like WarioWare. Uh, this kind of combines the best of all of the Wario games into one, WarioWare games into one. You got WarioWare touch style games, you got Twisted, it uses the gyroscope of the 3DS. 
So you have those games in here, and then also just the more basic ones, like from the original Game Boy Advance game. So this is uh, maybe the biggest WarioWare game to ever come out, uh, with the most micro games, and just just a fantastic, fantastic package. So much stuff in here, very cool. Hopefully, we get more WarioWare in the future. I did I did really like the Switch game uh, WarioWare Get It Together, uh, but it didn't have as much content as this one, so. There's Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. What a game to come out for the new Nintendo 3DS exclusively. Uh, wow, like they just ported this huge, huge RPG onto the 3DS and it's certainly not the best way to play Xenoblade Chronicles 3D, but it is super fascinating to go through. Uh, it is, uh, it's, like I said, such a massive game to have on a portable console and it was, it was great to see. This is actually the first way I started playing Xenoblade Chronicles. I still never beat this game. I know that's a, a shame, but I'll have to go back and play like the Switch re-release re or something at some point. Here we got Yokai Watch, the absolute massive, massive hit in Japan. Uh, it took so long to bring Yokai Watch over to the States and I don't think it had not even close to the same impact as, as it did in Japan, but Still a cool little like Pokemon style series. Uh, obviously, it uses yokai like monster type characters, which is cool. Love the designs and stuff of these games, but I haven't played too much of them, so I don't have too much to say. And I do have the other yokai watch games. This is Yokai Watch 2 Bony Spirits. And I did a Pokemon thing here. Brought out two versions of Yokai Watch 2. This is Fleshy Souls. And. They even had a third version, Yokai Watch 2 Psychic Specters. This is like the the platinum or emerald version of the Yokai Watch 2 games. So, I mean, it's it's cool to have these. I still haven't opened this one either, but I'm glad I do cuz these Yokai Watch games are getting ridiculously expect expensive. Just like Yokai Watch 3, man. I didn't even realize Yokai Watch 3 came out. And I noticed like a month after it did uh, release physically, they, there was like zero fanfare, nothing. I realized this game came out physically and I was like, okay, this is gonna be hard to find in the future. So I, I picked it up used for like $50, which is I think like $10 more than what it uh, came out for originally. And like I said, I just knew it was gonna be hard to find. I'm really glad I picked this one up because this is easily one of the most expensive 3DS games to find now, going upwards of $300. So I'm super, super happy to have picked this one up. And the last Yokai Watch game we got in the States in terms of the mainline series. And there was also the side side series, Yokai Watch Blasters. This is the White Dog Edition. I think there's also a Red Cat Edition uh, or Red Dog Edition. I don't remember exactly what they called that other version, but this is also like uh, two games. I don't have that other version, but I'm glad once again to have this one. Again, this is this is harder to find for sure and very expensive. Yoshi's New Island. I know people give this game a lot of flack and it's definitely not the best Yoshi game out there, but it's not bad either. I do like the art style. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the music too much. The music's not terrible either other than a few tracks here and there that are, that are just like really like grating on the ear. But it's a fun little Yoshi's Island style game and it, it's it's harmless really I'd say. That's, that's the best way I can put it. <laughs> and finally for the uh, the regular games that I have here, uh, the, the regular standard edition North American games, is Zero Time D Dilemma, part of the Zero Escape series. This is the the third one, and I did not really play this at all. Uh, since I never beat Virtue's Last Reward, I don't know why that, that kind of stopped me from going to this one and playing it, but I had to pick it up because I, I like the series a lot, and I want to play it at some point, so... Yeah, that's Zero Time Dilemma. Alright, now I want to go through some of my uh, collector's editions and more big box stuff that I have. Uh, some of the stuff I actually showed off uh, earlier uh, similar like uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4, I have this uh, collector's edition version that comes with like a big strategy guide, so I'm not going to talk too much about this, but I have the big box version of this. 
Uh, similarly, Legend of Legacy here, I showed this off, but uh, this came, I think this was just a day one edition or like uh, just the launch edition version. Comes with like an art book and CD. It's a bigger box, but again, Legend of Legacy. Bravely Default is another one, another one I showed off. This is the collector's edition and has a bunch of cool stuff in there, like a CD art book, like AR cards. Uh, this is a really cool, big little collector's edition, and I'm, I'm glad I got this one because really enjoy Bravely, Bravely Default as a game, and it looks cool. Unfortunately, it got crushed a bit when I when I bought it originally, but whatever. What are you gonna do? Here's Fire Emblem: Shadows of Valencia, the the limited edition copy. Talked about this one a lot, but I'm very happy to have this collector's edition as well, especially since. Uh, I kind of recently played this one and love it to this death, so I'm very, very happy to own this collector's edition. Bravely Second End Layer. This is just a massive collector's edition. This comes with a huge, huge art book on the inside. Uh, really, really cool. Even though I have not played Bravely Second, cool game to have because this is just this is just huge. This is giant. Here's Seventh Dragon, which I showed off as well. This comes with a little art book. As well as Stella Glow. Which is weird. These all have like different like sized boxes. It's super strange, but uh, cool to have like these like bigger box stuff that you can display. This is the last one that I showed off already. This is Persona Q, Shadow of the Labyrinth, the Wild Cards Premium Edition. This came with like a, uh, I think it came with like a big 3DS case that you could uh, just pop your 3DS in and maybe some cards as well. Uh, cool, cool collectors. It has like a nice texture to it. All right, now stuff that I didn't actually show off. This is Coldcept. Uh, I think it's called Coldcept Revolt Collector's Edition. I, I've i never played a Coldcept game, but they are like a board game slash card game all in one. And uh, yeah, this is like a cool little collector's edition that I, that I ended up picking up from Nintendo and NIS, so. There's Etrian Odyssey Nexus. This one is still sealed, but this is like one of those Atlas games. Comes in this bigger box with the soundtrack and art book. Cool to have. Radiant Historia, the perfect chronology, the launch edition of this game. Again, comes with an art book, uh, some, some decals and stuff like that. This is a remake of the DS version of Radiant Historia, which is one of the most highly regarded RPGs on that system. And I think this one adds some voice acting and some, some new stuff in there. Apparently this is like one of the best RPGs on the 3DS and the DS, so uh, I haven't personally played through it. I can't, I can't tell you much other than I know it deals with some time travel stuff, but I know a lot of people would recommend it, so. Got the Alliance Alive. This is uh, pretty similar to Legend of Legacy. I think it might be the same team that worked on this one. But I did not play this one. Uh, this one's still sealed. Again, an RPG that is uh, harkens back to kind of like the older days. It's a cool little collector's edition, launch edition here. We got Corpse Party, back to school edition. Uh, this copy of mine is a little bit beat up on the outside, but that's okay. It's fine. Uh, this came with couple figures here which is kind of cool and I've heard good things about the corpse party games they're like uh, horror adventure more like visual novel type things and I'd love to try this one out at some point I had persona Q uh, here's persona Q 2 new sim cinema labyrinth I remember Atlas saying like uh, this was a late late 3ds release and they were like they're not gonna make many copies of this game so definitely had to pick up the collector di collector's edition here uh, I still have it sealed. I don't know when I'll be opening it or getting around to it, but it's very cool to have this. Comes like plush, some cards, art book, really cool set. Might open it up at some point just to like, you know, take a look at all that stuff. And the last limited edition, special edition I have is Fire Emblem Fates special edition. This is highly sought after. Ridiculous how expensive this is. Like it's stupid. Nintendo just did not make many of these, and I remember back in the day, it was just so, so hard to get a copy of this. And it is the only way to play uh, this Fire Emblem Fates Revelation, uh, this, this version of the game now, because that was 
initially only on the eShop and the only other way to get it uh, physically was on this single cartridge um, with this limited edition. So I, I've i never actually beaten either uh, uh, either Birthright or Conquest, Fire, Fire, Fire Emblem Fates. I know there's fans that have huge problems with these games. Uh, so it's not really like a favorite in the Fire Emblem franchise, but it's still very cool to have these uh, this special edition here. And I'm, I'm glad I was able to pick it up. I was lucky. And last but not least, I have some Japanese 3DS games I want to show off here. I recently made a video on my main channel of Japanese exclusive 3DS games. So if you want to check those out, I'll have that uh, link to that in the, the description. Uh, but yeah, let's go over the Japanese 3DS games I have real quick. This is Beyond the Labyrinth. Love that it has this cool uh, kind of a holographic shiny co cover here. This is a really, really cool game. It has a fan translation. If you want to learn more, I talked about it in my video, so I don't want to take up too much time talking about it here, but it is a fun, fun dungeon crawler. This is uh, the first game in the Great Ace Attorney series. Picked this up before the, the Switch version came out, uh, and you know it's still cool to have this, but I'm so, so glad that Capcom actually released the collection here of the first two games. Uh, these are these are fantastic Ace Attorney games. Here's uh, Daigasso Band Brothers P. This is a music rhythm game we never actually got in the States. I think uh, Europe may have gotten one version of this game on the original DS called Jam with the Band. Uh, this is, like I said, it's, it's kind of like a music rhythm game, but I don't know too much about it. Uh, wanted to pick it up though because it was super cheap and I, I want to check it out at some point. Here's Digimon Redigitize, uh, Digimon World, I think, Redigitize Decode. Uh, this is a Digimon World style game that has a fan translation. Did not talk about this too much on my video, but I did play a bit of this and it seems pretty cool, pretty well made. Uh, this art style is very uh, reminiscent. I, th I think it's the same artist that does the Devil Survivor games, which I, ta which I talked about earlier. Um, yeah, cool, cool that this has a fan translation and one of the reasons why I picked it up. We got Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 3. This is kind of more like a Pokemon style Dragon Quest game where you collect monsters and stuff like that. And to go along with that, we've got Dragon Quest Monsters 3D. This is the uh, a remake of a Game Boy game. And Dragon Quest Monsters 2, uh, the remake of Dragon Quest Monsters 2 on the, on the Game Boy as well. These are all Really cool games. I mentioned them very briefly, kind of in my in my 3DS exclusive video. So if you want to check out that that and see what these games are all about, you can uh, you can see that. EX Troopers. This is a kind of a really interesting game because it came out on the 3DS and the PS3. Like those were the two platforms it came out on. Uh, but this is a cool action game from Capcom. Very mission based, kind of like Monster Hunter in a way, but. Uh, very cool. This one also has a fan translation now, which you can check out and and play and it's just it's just a cool game. Uh, it's in the Lost Planet series, which you would not expect seeing like the cover, but uh, it's really cool. Here's Game Center CX3 or Retro Game Challenge 3. Definitely not the best game in the Retro Game Challenge franchise. Unfortunately, it has some cool games in there, but I would not would not recommend checking this out if you can check out the first one or the second game, which also has a fan translation. This one does not. Here's Guild Zero One. Uh, this is a compilation of games from a few different different developers, like uh, I think Suda51 worked on Liberation Maiden here, and uh, Crimson Shroud is a cool like Dungeons and Dragons style game. These came out on the eShop in America but I wanted to grab the physical version here because I think this was such a cool little series and this one also has like a like a nice holographic cover and yeah I just wanted to I just wanted to grab this to have it because I, I really like this guild series of games and uh, it was cool that level 5 published it. Here's Maple Story uh, on the 3DS. Uh, talked about this one as well in my video. Cool little 2D side-scrolling action game. I had never played Maple Story before until I played this and it's, it's cool, it's cute, it's nothing too deep, but it's a fun game. This is Touch Detective 3. 
Uh, I forgot the full name, something to do with bananas, but these are fun games. We got Touch Detective and Touch Detective 2.5, as they called it here in the States, on the original DS, but we never got this third game in the series, and it's cool. I love the art style of these games. I love what they go for. It's like a detective game. You gotta unravel a mystery, and they're fun, funny, very quirky. Check it out. This one has a fan translation. Here is Nazo Waku Yakta. Uh, such a weird, strange game, but I absolutely love it. I there, There's so much I could say, uh, but I talked about this one in my video as well, and I, I, I really can't go over everything that I talked about there uh, while just, you know, showing it off here in, 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 in a short amount of time. So if you want to see what this game is about, check out my video. I, I really recommend it. I wish we got this in the States. I wish we somehow would have gotten a localized version, but yeah, it's unfortunately wasn't meant to be. Ace Attorney Trilogy. I just had to own this because I, I, I want to own like every version of Ace Attorney there is. This is a HD, or sorry, not, not HD, but like a, just a re-release of 1, 2, and 3 on, uh, on the 3DS. And I believe this has English on the cart as well, so you can play it in English with this copy. And I wanted to get a physical version of Ace Attorney 5 and Ace Attorney 6. We got these digital only in the States, unfortunately, but I wanted to own these games physically, so grab these two copies. Uh, yeah, these, these don't, I believe, I don't think these have English on the cart, sadly, but still wanted them for the collection. Picross 3D2, I absolutely adore Picross 3D, so this is another one that I did get digitally, but I just wanted to have this one physically as well for the collection, because I think this game is amazing. I love Picross 3D. Here's uh, Rhythm Heaven The Best Plus. Had to own this physically as well. Once again, another one that I owned digitally. But I actually picked this up before Nintendo announced this for America digitally. So I wanted to play it. I love Rhythm Heaven. Needed to have this copy of the game. And, you know, I'm glad I picked it up when I did because uh, I got to play it early. I guess, like, I, I really, really enjoyed Rhythm Heaven the best. Plus, I want more Rhythm Heaven games, please. This is uh, Slime Mori Mori Dragon Quest 3. This is uh, Dragon Quest Heroes Rocket Slime, uh, known, known as that in the in the US. So uh, this is a really good game. I talked about this in my video as well. A little bit of a spin-off of the Dragon Quest series, but very fun. This is Sumiko Garashi. Uh, here you settle down, I think. It's, it's something like that. That's what it's called. This is a fun little like it's kind of life sim style game where you can play it with these very cute characters and give them gifts and all that stuff and play a couple mini games here and there. Just a really cute game. Talked about Theater of Them Final Fantasy earlier. Japan got Theater of Them Dragon Quest and we never got it. Sadly, uh, Dragon Quest music is still amazing. This game is still amazing. I don't have a ton more to say that I didn't already say with the Theater of Them Final Fantasy, but this game's amazing. Here's Time Travelers. I talked about this in my video as well. Really cool, like, story-based game from level 5. I uh, wish we got it in the States. Uh, this one also came out on the Vita uh, as well. But, yeah, it's a cool story-based game. I, I wish we got a, a full fan translation, or a full translation in general. And finally, we got Zookeeper 3D. Yeah, this is just another uh, Zookeeper game. Uh, we got Zookeeper on the original DS, and I guess they made a 3DS version here. So, yeah, this is a fun little match three puzzle game. Only released in Japan for some reason. We never got it here. But if you like puzzle games, if you like match threes, this is a, this is a decent one. So, check it out. So that was my 3DS collection, guys. Uh, if you stuck it out to the end, you guys are champs. Uh, this is a super long video. I totally get that. Understand if you kind of had to, you know, go away, do something. But I really enjoy going through these collections and reminiscing about the games uh, that I that I've gotten over the years, and kind of just looking back at everything I played and looking back at the, at the system itself. I, it's just really cool to go back. And the 3DS, such a cool system. 
really like it, it's something that I go back and play more now even even compared to like a couple years ago because I'm starting to get that nostalgia going and, and street pass is fun to do again and take out the conventions and stuff like that so yeah just just really fun to look back at this system and, and, and these games and hope you enjoyed it do another collection video for another system here at some point let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see any collection you'd like to see uh, but yeah uh, catch you guys later thanks for watching